You're not home, what, what, eight years now, is it? Eight and a half. Eight yeah. and a half years. But, that, but I, you know, when you, you kind of say that to people, then you kind of half expect a round of applause, but I don't think that, you know, there should be anything like it. Because where we come from in Manchester, that was just the done thing, do you know what I mean? And I've, I've never... I've never had a problem with it. The only, the, only, the only thing that is bad about drugs is it makes you drink more. And that eventually messes you up, I think. But my, I, 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 if there was gold medals for taking drugs for England, I'd have won a shitload. <laughs> <laughs> and I enjoyed it, but it was kind of got to the point where I'd, just, I'd done them all, and that was it, and there was none left. And I was like, well, I can't be arsed anymore. <laughs> but there was a moment, wasn't there, when you actually... There was a, 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 a physical moment where you thought, no. Yeah, I mean, how it's been... How it's been portrayed in the past is kind of I stood up at a party and went, and this should be my last line, <laughs> right? And after this, there will be no more. You know, it was kind of, we were at a party one night and it was just, I got up one day and I thought, I can't be bothered today. And then one day turned into a week and that turned into a month and then that turned into a year. And then I kind of just enjoyed not being out of it all the time. And then as that kind of... As that kind of state of mind took hold, I'd kind of go out with the people who I was surrounded with at the time and you're sitting there thinking, I don't even like you. Your bird's an idiot, you know. <laughs> what are you doing in my front room? And in the end, it's kind of... Everybody just kind of left the party, if you like, and was just left to get on with life, I guess. Is it a struggle, though? I mean, do you have to reorganise your, your life, not to go to the old haunts and meet those old people not really. again? It isn't. Not really. I mean, there's no, re there's no temptation there. You've got... You've got to be strong-willed anyway, right, to say, and vanity plays a big part in my life, you know what I mean? Oh, how my teeth were falling out and all sorts, you know what I mean? And kind of, nobody wants to look like a weirdo, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, in the beginning, I don't want this to sound like my drugs, hell, because it wasn't hell. It was fantastic. I had some of the most monumental nights out ever. And monumental nights in wrote some of the best songs, met some of the greatest people in some of the greatest parties, man. And, um, <laughs> but there just came a point where it's like, I can't be bothered anymore. And, but, but what about the... That, that's an interesting point. You said you reckon you wrote some of your best stuff. Yeah. Mind you, you, you wrote some of your best stuff, of course, when you were in Manchester, didn't you? On the, yeah. In the Dole as well, I mean, yeah. before you became a... So that's an interesting point, isn't it? That you were writing these songs when you weren't actually a professional musician. Well, I'd written, I'd written all the first... I'd written all the first album, all the lyrics and all the music before I got a record deal. It was on the Dole. The yeah. second album was already started before I had a record deal. I finished that off. The third album was probably basically written about two years before it came out. So I, 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 was, a, I was prolific in my youth, do you know what I mean? Because I had plenty of time on my hands. Yes. But, what, but what happens when you kind of, you, you get into it and you get, you get kind of older, you get more baggage, you know what I mean? The more baggage that you get, the less time you have. I mean, when I was 24, I had a guitar and a pair of Adidas trainers and 20 Bensons and that was it, and that was all I cared about. You know, so I had time on my hands to write music, you know. But as life gets on, you get kids and all that carry on, do you know what I mean? And you get married and then you get divorced and blah, blah, blah and all that. <laughs> you kind of, you don't, you, don't, you don't have the time to devote, you know, to uh, music. And there's football and all sorts to be getting married. <laughs> exactly, awesome. And yeah. the TV is brilliant these days, do you know what I mean? Uh, and, and what about, I mean, that, on that transition from, I mean, the, the thing about, about your success was that, you know, people always say they're an overnight success. Well, that's not true no. either. I mean, you're three years touring around, weren't you? Without a record deal, just... Well, we, started the band in, in, we started the band at the beginning of 91 and we got a record, the first single come out in 94, we got a record deal at the end of 93. So we were a good, good three years in the back of the transit van doing the, doing the toilets, which were the best times, you know. Yeah. They were brilliant. Yeah, that apprenticeship's invaluable, I imagine. Yeah, because you're in it for the right reasons then, do you know what I mean? You're in it for the... I mean, I'm not saying that any of us are in it for any other reasons than the music now, but, but for then, it was just the love of doing it, do you know yes, what I mean? Yes. Of... of, of Saying when people used to come up uh, when we were out in Manchester, and they'd say, "What do you do?" and I'd say, "I'm a rock and roll star," and they'd go, "Who are you? I've never heard of you." I'm like, <laughs> "Well, I play guitar for a living. That makes me a rock and roll star." It doesn't matter if you've never seen me on top of the pops. We'll get to that in a few years. <laughs> so, in fact, you never really dreamt of, of it when you're in that dull queue. It just kind of crept up on you in a sense. Well, I'd always been interested in music, yeah. right? And I'd always been interested in listening to music. And there was a and there was a guitar in our house, and I was kind of. I learned, I taught myself how to play that. And I was fascinated by Top of the Pops and rock stars like Mark Boland and David Bowie and, and, and the flamboyancy of these, you know, these people that seem to live in a different world, you know. And rock stars never came from Manchester. They came to Manchester and done gigs and then they got off. But nobody ever, and then, and then kind of like the Smiths and New Order and the, and the Manchester scene mm. kind of started. And, um, 
you know, it was fascinating. And I got a job as a roadie for a band called Inspiral Carpets. And I'd already travelled the world probably twice before I joined Oasis. And I'd seen, you know, I'd been to Russia and South America and Japan mm. and, and, and America. So I'd kind of seen it all and done it, you know. And I'm, by the time I, I, was, I was on tour once and I called my mum and uh, I said, where's Liam? And she said, he's rehearsing. What? <laughs> what for? Has he been caught or something? You know, and she said, no, he's, he's, no, he's rehearsing, he's, he, he's in a band. And I was like, he's in a band? And then she said, he's the singer. And I was like, he's the singer in a band? It's like, it must be diabolical. And uh, so he kind of got back and Liam asked us to come and see him rehearse. And he actually asked me to be their manager, right? Now, if you think our relationship is bad now with being in the band, can you imagine what it would have been like if I was their manager? <laughs> and have you ever thought of reconciliation with your dad at all? No, I've not, I, but I, that kind of, I don't have any bad feelings towards him for what happened, do you know what I mean? You don't. I, no, I don't, because it's not shaped the psyche of who I am, you know, it's never, I've never once sat down and thought, right, you know, I'm going to write a song about my childhood, do you know what I mean? Because who wants to listen to that nonsense anyway? It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't play any part in my makeup. And I get asked about, you know, journalists all the time, well, it must do, and it must do, and I say to them, well, I can invent some kind of angst if you want, but I'd be lying, do you know what I mean? It's like, I wouldn't dwell on that part of my life at all. To me, it's just, it's just, we just growing up, you know, and growing up, although we had no money or anything like that, you know, we didn't even have carpet on the floors in our house. My mum will hate me for saying that, but there you go, sorry, man. But, um, <laughs> when I look back on it, it was great because it kind of, the, the kind of not, not the thing with my dad, but the struggle of being on that own, it kind of makes you who you are. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It makes you self-sufficient. That's what it means. Yeah. So you don't need the priory or any of that stuff? No, the priory... <laughs> <laughs> why, would, why, why would you take into an hospital to pay somebody four grand an hour to tell you things that really you should already know about yourself? <laughs> <laughs> it's all common sense, isn't you know it? I mean? yeah. If any of you are watching, give me the money. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sort it out for you. <laughs> All the best just... with the all the best with the album. Well, thank you very it's much. It's a reminder of some of the marvelous songs that you have written. Oh, they are really very good, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> and you continue to do so. Noel Gallagher, thank you very much. Thank indeed. you.